Digital Foundry is proudly sponsored by the Logitech G935 headset. Set for release later this year, The Witcher 3 is at last confirmed for Nintendo Switch with a complete edition. It's handled by developer Saber Interactive, known for its work on the Halo Master Chief Collection, which leaves CD Projekt Red to focus on Cyberpunk of course. Already though, there's a lot of buzz over how this will actually run, as one of the most daring Switch conversions to date. CDPR has been pretty upfront about what we can expect as well. On Twitter, the studio says we'll get a dynamic 720p from the game while docked, and 540p while handheld. It does contain all 16 free DLCs and two expansions, making it one of the largest games, confirmed to be around 32 gigabytes, to land on the hybrid machine. What's the score then? Now, this is purely based on the trailer and early assets, and so there is a limit to what we can actually see from the game. We have around 30 seconds of in-engine gameplay to work with for a comparison, and a few high-quality PNGs as well. Still, that's just about enough to get a sense of where it's headed. Okay, there's clearly a need for a lot of smart adjustments. Surprisingly, the footage here is running higher than I'd expected, and I can confirm CDPR's claim here. It does use a dynamic system to adjust for rendering load on screen, and testing the footage available, it shows a native 1280x720 at maximum, while other shots count in at around 896x504 lowest. The range may change in the final game, and we'll be back with more testing, but from a quick look here, most shots are actually coming in at 720p. Given this is almost certainly docked play, it's no comparison to the native 1080p on PS4. Still, an impressive feat in itself given the complexity of the game and Switch's lower power spec. The only snag is that anti-aliasing quality is evidently low, which makes that stair-stepping stick out all the more. Playing handheld will certainly be the better way to evaluate the Switch's strengths, especially if it does indeed sit at 960x540, where such a res will be harder to catch on the smaller screen. As for settings, this is where changes are more obvious. Switch's 1GHz clock CPU has to deal with the game's asset streaming, physics and AI, and so it could be a challenge holding a stable 30fps on what's essentially mobile technology. Based on the footage so far, foliage and character draw distances do take a hit on Switch as a result, and so the environment is less populated at range compared to PS4. Check out this high quality PNG shot, captured on Switch of the lush Toussaint area. Compared to PS4, grass transparencies are both lower quality and lower in density, no doubt a huge help for Switch's lower RAM bandwidth, and in aiming for 720p. This is the reality of adapting for Switch's Tegra X1 chipset. Overall world detail is closer to PC's lower settings. Likewise, texture quality on those hanging corpses is significantly pruned back, adapting for the lesser 3.5GB of RAM reported to be available to Switch far less than the available 5GB on PS4. You'll also see texture mapping on the ground takes a hit in general for this wide shot of the Velen area. Potentially, we're also seeing a nisotropic filtering running at a lower setting too, but that's par for course with so many Switch titles. Again, these texture changes will be easy to overlook by playing on the smaller screen. It'll also help hugely in keeping asset sizes in check too, and avoiding an excessive install size. Last but not least, shadow resolution and the taxing SSAO setting are on the receiving end of a cut as well. In short, it ends up giving the Switch footage a lighter appearance overall. In fact, it looks like ambient occlusion. The shade between objects is either cut out completely or running in a limited capacity, which does make sense. You'll mainly catch the difference under plants, and it does create a visible difference, but given the power on tap, it is a reasonable change. Crucially, the core detail, the framework of the world, is very much still in place. It's a miracle when you think asset size is confirmed by CDPR to be around 32GB. Bear in mind the PS4 edition is over 60GB and it shows the challenge Saber Interactive are up against. Even that promised 32GB goes way beyond the typical cartridge size of Switch games so far. Potentially it could store the base game on the cartridge and require an extra download, save for those two expansions. Again, this is uncharted territory. The scale of the game goes beyond anything we've seen on Switch so far, and so we'll have to see what happens. What of the cutscenes? Well, The Witcher 3 makes sparing use of pre-rendered cutscenes, many of which will likely get a drop in quality on Switch. It's a fair trade-off, given that 720p is the target res, and it'll help in squeezing the install size down. 
What I don't want to see is audio quality to take a hit as well. We've seen low grade sound in other Switch ports, Dark Souls and Assassin's Creed 3 most recently, where in both cases the low bitrate audio often sticks out like a sore thumb. The storytelling is a huge part of The Witcher 3, and having decent quality audio for both music and voice is at the heart of that. Every chop and change here is necessary for holding decent performance. Now, this footage is limited in length and encoded at 30fps too. What we can assume is, Switch will target 30fps much like PS4 and Xbox One. Nothing we see here drops below 30, and it's got V-Sync engaged, but this is hardly the most taxing bit of the game. And nor is it really a lengthy sample. A look at a more richly detailed spot like the White Orchard will say a lot about how the cutbacks in foliage detail are helping to hold 30. And likewise for the Crookback Bog, a spot notorious for hammering PS4 and Xbox One with alpha effects will be very telling. How Saber Interactive ends up balancing performance with visual quality will be fascinating to see. We've had a cursory attempt at simulating a Switch port ourselves on a stripped down PC featuring an underclocked GT1030 and there the results were obviously less than flattering. What the trailer footage does show is the difference it makes to have a developer optimised directly for the system. We'll see how the final game appears. These are logical changes and it shows just what technical exercise The Witcher 3 will be for Switch. Compared to the likes of Doom or the Wolfenstein ports on Switch, both GPU heavy games with a more linear focus, this is broaching new territory. The game ranks up there as one of the most richly detailed games out there. All eyes on the final release promised this year and I can't wait to see how it turns out. That's not all for today though. The E3 Nintendo Direct delivered in spades this year, showing a new Zelda, Animal Crossing and attention to Smash Bros Ultimate. In amongst those, it also put out a gorgeous looking trailer for Panzer Dragoon Remake on Switch. This really caught my eye. It's a complete makeover of the 1995 Sega Saturn Classic. As a huge fan of the original, I can't be more excited for this. We're promised improved visuals and controls and so far it looks like it's going the extra mile with a completely overhauled experience. So let's take a quick bonus look at it. What do we know so far? Well, it's confirmed for release this winter and follows up on Sega's promise to remake the first two games. Cast your mind back to Saturn's first year on the market and Panzer Dragoon really marked a significant technical milestone for the company. It was a rail shooter built to show off the system's 3D credentials with full 360 degrees of rotation and beautifully animated models. It also made the most of Saturn's notoriously complex design. The console's two video display processors worked in conjunction on different layers to create these far-reaching sprawls of terrain. Opening with the ruins of a sunken city, it was a huge evolutionary step over sprite-based Mega Drive rail shooters like Afterburner or Space Harrier 2. Appropriately enough, it's this first level that the remake trailer is focused on. Comparisons between Saturn and Switch are night and day of course, no labels needed for this one. Textures are built from scratch, and that unique water layer rendered by VDP2 is now replaced with a more conventional ripple shader. It's nicely detailed with caustic effects as waves splash against the ruins. And while there's limited reflections in gameplay, you can see SSR at least in the cinematics. As a bonus, it even comes complete with advanced lighting effects like crepuscular rays. Above all though, the entire stage is thankfully still recognisable, right the way down to the boss at the end. As for resolution, we've come a long way as well. Compared to the 224p of the Saturn original, this new Switch footage counts in at a pixel match for a 1080p display. Whether that's just for show or what we'll actually end up with remains to be seen. It's also curious to note the aspect ratio we're being served in the remake is unusual. Simulating a 2.4 to 1 style cinematic framing, the resolution technically isn't 1080p. By trimming the tops and bottoms of 1080p, it effectively makes the resolution lower overall at 1920 by 860. Again, maybe this is just for the trailer, but it could be an interesting way for Switch to target a lower resolution while avoiding upscaling. As for performance, well, we at least expect a huge upgrade on the 20fps target on Saturn, but that's really the extent of what we know. It's a 30fps encoded trailer, and so not fair game for accurate performance testing. But drops under that 30fps line are at least invisible to the eye, which is a good sign if it's targeting that refresh. 
So far though, the Panzer remake looks to be shooting for a high watermark in visual quality, with new cinematics and music to boot, and I can't wait. Along with The Witcher 3 Complete Edition, there's a lot to look forward to on Switch later this year. For Nintendo, I think it rounds out one of the best showings from all companies at E3. That's about all I have time for today though. There's more E3 coverage to come, so stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed this early look though, be sure to like or subscribe to support what we do at Digital Foundry. And be sure to hit the bell to get notifications as soon as they land. For the source file to this video, be sure to check out our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net and to get in touch directly, just use Twitter. But from me for now, thanks for watching. Featuring 2.4 GHz wireless, 50mm Pro G audio drivers, and DTS Headphone X 2.0 surround sound technology under the hood, the G935 headset delivers the ultimate wireless audio solution for gamers, whether you're playing on PC, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, or mobile. Order yours today from Logitech G.